Thanks. Uh, hope you can see my presentation. Yep. Okay, very, very good. Um, let me first of all say um, that I really, really enjoyed and appreciated uh, this, this, this conference. Um, you were able to put together a really, really interesting uh, program. And, um, and uh, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, quite honored um, to be able that among all of these uh, great presentations um, to basically do the last talk of the conference. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can sort of serve that well. So, um, okay. So a little bit about the background. Um, as we know, uh, we've, we've, we've heard uh, some, of, some of the stuff already uh, during the conference. Um, you know that migration shapes regions the strongest in the short term. I mean, um, the long-term long trends or for long-term trends uh, like fertility is, is, is basically more important, but uh, short-term fluctuations uh, are basically due to migration in the first uh, or, or overall. And um, which of course has an impact on the population structure, which particularly for, for, for smaller regions um, is significant. And um, yeah, like um, we've uh, talked a little bit uh, about also is that um, we know that uh, stochasticity um, is, uh, um, is, is, is massive in, 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 in migration. And um, since it is uh, very sensitive toward acute events such as crisis, um, um, in a previous study um, with my colleagues from Nuremberg, um, Hans Fuchs and, and Doris Söhnlein, um, we uh, showed that uh, there is a high, high, very high um, correlation for Germany uh, on the NUTS3 level or, or in general um, between international and internal migration and um, especially internal migration after international migration with a one year lag um, correlation of uh, close to 95%. Um, we also have, have heard this a couple of times here, of course we know this, that economically uh, weaker regions, uh, they, they often, often suffer persistent net, migra uh, net emigration, um, and which is uh, especially the case among more educated and skilled subpopulations. And um, another problem is like that, uh, or which is also connected to that is that uh, the de depopulation um, that we observe is uh, especially among young and uh, fertile population groups, um, which has then some kind of echo effect that we have uh, eventually um, low births uh, also um, among these districts. I would say districts, um, which which I use the term for not three. So if I say districts, it's always not three here for Germany. And um, of course, uh, we know, or, or we, we've seen, Frank has always already talked about this a little bit, that it's of course important to predict future developments, um, also in internal migration in this case, uh, to enact appropriate policies early on. So, um, motivation a little bit, and we've seen, the, we've heard this uh, already uh, a bit, that migration projections, uh, NUTS3 level, very regularly done deterministically, um, which um, I find quite problematic, since uh, especially migratory processes are highly stochastic, uh, like I said, and especially hard to predict, and uh, which, of course, then lowers the predictive value of uh, selective uh, deterministic projections. Um, then also another problem I encountered a little bit is that, um, of course, there, there are nice, um, nice approaches in, in, in Italy uh, on that from uh, Francesco Billari, uh, for, 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 for instance. Um, but overall, uh, the concepts of, of consistent modeling um, uh, between international and internal migration and also between uh, different regions um, is, is, is sometimes lacking. Um, so um, what we tried here is to cover all of these aspects a little bit within a, um, so to say, really preliminary and early focus approach. <clears throat> the data we used is, um, is from the statistical offices of the federal states and, and the status of the national uh, statistical office, um, annual immigration and emigration data for Germany by six age groups, uh, which are provided. 
um, over the period 1995 to 2019, um, alongside end of year population estimates for 17 age groups for the same period. Um, the approach was a little bit as a first step um, uh, to compare a little bit different uh, modeling and forecast approaches. Um, not like in an in, in extensive manner like uh, Tom Wilson would do, for, for instance, but um, we compared like five, five major approaches, so to say, and a couple of, uh, of uh, sub models uh, for, for that and compared them um, by a back, back test um, over the years 2009 to 2019 um, and compared them at, um, with a statistic called the SMAP, the symmetric mean absolute percentage error. Uh, and the winning model we then used uh, to uh, build a stochastic forecast um, for the years 2020 to 2040 um, for the six age groups and uh, all districts. <clears throat> just, just a short overview um, due to time uh, restrictions, of course. I, I won't get too, too deep in, into most of the stuff here. Um, I just checked a couple, couple of things um, I, I imagine could, could be useful. Um, first of all, uh, of course, the, uh, the thing which is mainly used also, or at least for Germany still, is, is uh, like naive migration models. Um, and so I checked uh, the performance of a couple of naive uh, modeling approaches, naive random walk model, uh, a naive white noise model, or uh, two of them, um, which uh, then were based on the mean, the one, the, the mean of, of, uh, of the district specific um, migration and one on the median of those. Um, then those who, who know me a bit better and, and my work know that uh, I'm in love with principal component analysis. So uh, I checked a couple of uh, principal component uh, based approaches. Um, one, I suggested a couple of years ago for uh, international migration based on, on uh, net migration flows, um, where um, we uh, predict the long-term trend of the first principal component. And, and for the second one, uh, we use different um, assumptions as well and check them, how, how they performed. Um, then I also checked a, a similar model basically, but then not on the net migration flows, but the gross migration flows. And uh, I also checked this, a PCA model um, based on pseudo migration rates. Um, I, I like to define this, this term as pseudo migration rates, um, why I will uh, come to in, in a bit. And um, then finally, uh, the last one, last approach was like a, a random walk model of log pseudo migration rates. Um, <clears throat> um, this, uh, the sequence of, of the model is basically just, um, um, it's, it's just when, when I, I imagined the models, so to say, or the different approaches. So um, doesn't have a further meaning or, or something like that. Um, of course, um, which, which I didn't mention here uh, is that I also checked uh, causal models, but um, they didn't perform too well. So I, because of page limitations, I, I, I threw them out of the, of the paper basically. <clears throat> and um, what the results a little bit here, uh, the first results was that the uh, model five, the uh, random walk model on the uh, pseudo migration rates performed uh, by far the best, um, and uh, which is also basically in line with uh, with uh, what what my friend uh, Hans Fuchs is, 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 has been telling for years. Um, and based on this model, um, which we basically use as a baseline, um, I constructed a, a stochastic forecast um, where I included the stochastic. Uh, stochasticity by assuming that the first differences of the log pseudo migration rates <clears throat> um, uh, time series followed a multivariate Gaussian distribution with zero mean and an empirical covariance matrix derived from the data. And then um, I simulated a, a model the stochasticity in, in, in the forecast by uh, Monte Carlo simulation. Um, doing 1,000 random draws from the distribution, uh, we see there annually um, for uh, 10, 1,000 times. So we have 1,000 trajectories um, of the pseudo migration rates 
um, for all districts and, and the age groups and emigration, immigration. And um, for instance, here, um, so to say, the lack, lack in, uh, or the log immigration rate of age group A from district D in trajectory T for year Y um, is then basically just the, uh, the log migration rate <clears throat> for set group in, uh, in year 2019. Um, plus all, all of the differences over, over the years cumulated. And um, which of course can then be simply retransformed into the migration rates by exponentiating. So, <clears throat> so a little bit, why, why am I talking about pseudo mi mi migration rates? It's uh, that the problem is, 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 is always a little bit, um, we can of course compute emigration rates, but an immigration rate is not really an immigration rate um, since we don't have a real basis for, the, for this. Um, here to make it comparable, I, and that's why I use, uh, I coined in the term uh, pseudo immigration rate, I uh, refer to immigration, but relative to the um, population of the target region. And um, the nice thing about this is that if, if I define it like this, I have the same basis and I can define it as something like a pseudo net migration rate for, uh, for this group. Oh, sorry, that's a problem with thing here. And um, since, oh, only two minutes? Two minute warning? Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll be done in a bit. Uh, <clears throat> so, since this, this whole thing here is, uh, is uh, highly dimensional, it's difficult, of course, to, to present uh, too, too much uh, results here. Um, so I just defined some kind of migration inflicted net, my net growth rate for, uh, for the districts, um, which is just um, basically a growth process, multi, uh, a, a product of all the uh, net migration rates. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, net migration rates over, over, um, over the whole period. And if I, if I do it like this, then I can like give some kind of hint. I, I don't say, so uh, don't, don't take these numbers too seriously, but it's just, just about the direction. I just assume like um, what kind of the popular, um, what share of the population, well, other way around, um, relative to the baseline population we have at the end of two, the year 2019, how will this, this change grow, decrease, um, simply based on net migration over the uh, forecast period. And what I have here is uh, the probabilities for a decrease or, uh, or an increase, or here the probability of uh, depopulation among these age groups and for the districts um, over the whole period, I derive from my uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And um, what we see here is, uh, is that this is highly, um, highly uh, heterogeneous. Um, um, what we see for instance here uh, is uh, that we have a couple of quite small, small points here, small white points for the districts here, um, it's age group 18 to 24. This is, uh, is, this is the thing uh, Frank was already talking about a little bit. Um, the white points here are, for instance, the universities, university cities or the regions where we have large universities. Like here, um, the, the white point here in the middle, Hannover, here uh, Göttingen, here Berlin, and, uh, and so on. And we can, if we had more time, we, we could go into this in, in more detail, but it's just like an illustration um, how we could use this. And uh, of course, indeed, we have more, uh, uh, more detailed um, data and background, more detailed results, which of course I can kind of present here in, in a way, but um, we see here, here again, this is just, this is just an, another representation where we see here these uh, very green points Again, the university cities, and um, and here uh, we see, for instance, uh, higher migration because of labor market re reasons um, to the economically uh, stronger cities like Munich here or Wolfsburg here, Berlin here, and so on. Um, but I have to come to come to the point a little, a little bit. Um, 
uh, what we what we see or have seen a little bit um, on, on, on the figures is that depopulation among children based on migration, highly unlikely for the vast majority of German districts, um, but which is just an isolated effect of, 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 of migration and does not rule out depopulation in that age group due to low fertility. Very, very simple uh, interpretation of the results. Um, exceptions, larger, less family-friendly uh, family friendly cities uh, such as Berlin. Um, but what, what we see here, and you, you can look at the presentation later on, um, is a higher tendency of young families to migrate to the neighboring regions, for, for instance. Um, what we've seen there, uh, the differences between Berlin and the neighboring um, regions, neighboring uh, districts of Berlin. Um, depopulation, 1824, talked about this a little bit. We will have depopulation in, in most, most of the districts because they center on this, uh, the university cities. Um, Depopulation among uh, young labor uh, force in economically weaker regions, which is, um, um, for instance, this uh, central Germany. Um, less movement uh, among older workers, so to say, of course, and um, higher tendency of aging in the economically weaker regions uh, without strong labor markets as, as a result. Um, then we come to this discussion, and then I'm done. Um, what we've suggested here is a stochastic joint forecast model of pseudo immigration emigration rates by age group on the next three level in Germany, um, which uh, includes correlation in migration patterns between districts and auto correlations in the time series. Um, it models uh, internal inter international migration consist uh, consistently. Um, uh, we see um, that the, that we will have um, high heterogeneity in age structure of the districts, with an aging of already economically weaker regions, which is accelerated by internal migration. Um, limitations a little bit that the uh, the data we put in there is is limited to six age groups. Um, we don't have consistent consistent time series by by age and gender. Um, so we had no disaggregation by sex here, um, and the model is, 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 is uh, only directly directly connected to migration. Um, it's it's uh, what what is not included here is of course uh, birth trends, mortality trends. Um, this is something where I would say, okay, this is only the beginning of a story, not not the end. Um, we can we can use this as a building block for uh, further population forecast models. And um, of course, we have obviously, obviously we have high risk in future international migration, especially by unpredictable uh, refugee trends. I say unpredictable, like really crisis, but something like uh, climatic migration, uh, refugee migration, we can predict, um, uh, which then in the end eventually also has a high impact on internal migration as both are highly correlated. So many things, um, like I said, quite preliminary th uh, thus far. And um, since we um, also have a potential readership here, um, of course, I'm, I'm also interested in su suggestions um, about further results we, we can put there. Like I said, we have we have an amount of, of, of potential results, but this is just um, how I uh, disaggregate or aggregated this this far. Thanks. Thanks, Patrizio. Uh, Ross, right over to you. I, well, uh, we, we already have a comment or a question from um, Andrea Tamburini. This hypothesis you are very nice. When you say based on the baseline population, yeah. you mean that you are basically projecting population disaggregation just based on migration without considering the possible general change of the population structure. Yeah, yeah right. So like, like I said, this is um, this um, the results are presented here are just uh, an, an extreme simplification just um, to show a little bit how we could use this for uh, further results or to, uh, to, to prepare uh, further, further results and um, what we can generate from this. Uh, that's, that's why, why I said uh, there's no aging in, in, in this model or anything, um, but um, th this is something we would uh, um, include in, in something like a, a cohort component model in, in, in the end. And then we really have results generated, um, which give us very much insight. 